52. That Jesus Christ, or his apostles, have taught, that no man can be a Christian, or can be saved, unless he hath an explicit knowledge of all these things which have an immediate respect to the occasion, author, way, means, and issue of our salvation, and which are necessary for our knowing the true nature and design of IT. Nor must the poor excuse, of saying, it was not necessary to add any farther medium, and proceed to another syllogism, because you had secured that proposition before, go for payment. If you had secured it, as you say, it had been quite as easy, and much for your credit, to have produced the proof whereby you had secured it, than to say you had done it, and thereupon to reproach Mr. Bold with heedlessness, and to tell the world, that he cares not. What he saith. The rule of fair dispute is, indispensably to prove, where anything is denied. To evade this is shuffling, and he that, instead of it, answers with ill language, in my country, is called a foul mouthed wrangler. To the greed maker's exception to my demand, about the actual belief of all his fundamentals in his new creed, Mr. Bold asks, whether a man can believe particular propositions, and not actually believe them. But to this Mr. Edwards answers not. Mr. Bold, father acknowledges the creed maker's fundamental propositions to be in the Bible, and that they are for this purpose there, that they might be believed, and so, he saith, is every other proposition which is taught in our Bibles. But asks, how will it thence follow, that no man can be a Christian, until he particularly know, and actually assent to every proposition in our Bibles. But to this Mr. Edwards answers not. From to thirty, Mr. Bold shows, that the creed maker's reply concerning my not gathering of fundamentals out of the epistles is nothing to the purpose, and this he demonstratively proves. And to this Mr. Edwards answers not. The creed maker had falsely said, that I bring no tidings of an evangelical faith and thence very readily and charitably infers, which gives us to understand, that he verily believes there is no such Christian faith. To this Mr. Bowl thus softly replies, I think Mr. Edwards is much mistaken, both in his assertion and inference, and to show that he could not so infer, adds, if the author of the reasonableness of Christianity, and one hundred, had not brought any tidings of such a faith, I think it could not be thence justly inferred, that he verily believes there is no such Christian faith, because his inquiry and search was not concerning Christian faith, considered subjectively but objectively, what the articles be, which must be believed to make a man a Christian, and not, with what sort of faith these articles are to be believed. To this the creed maker answers indeed, but it is something as much worse than nothing, as falsehood is worse than silence, his words are, it may be questioned, from what he, the animadverter, hath the confidence to say, viz. There is no inquiry in the reasonableness of Christianity, concerning faith subjectively considered, but only objectively, and one hundred, and thus having set down Mr. B, D's words, otherwise than they are, for Mr. Bold does not say, there is no inquiry, 1. e. no mention, for so the creed maker explains inquiries here. For to convince Mr. Bold that there is an inquiry, 1. e. mention, of subjective faith, he alleges, that subjective faith is spoken of in the 296th and 297th pages of my book but Mr. Bold says not, that faith, considered subjectively, is not spoken of anywhere in the reasonableness of Christianity, and one hundred, but that the authors, inquiry and search, one, e, the author's search, or design of his search, was not concerning Christian faith considered subjectively, and thus the creed maker, imposing on his reader, by perverting Mr. Bold's sense, from what was the intention of my inquiry and search, to what I had said in it, 
he goes on, after his scurrilous fashion, to insult, in these words which follow, I say it may be guessed from this, what a liberty this writer takes, to assert what he pleases. Ants to assert what one pleases, without truth and without certainty, is the worst character can be given a writer, and with falsehood to charge it another, is no mean slander and injury to a man's neighbor. And yet to these shameful arts must he be driven, who finding his strength of managing a cause to lie only in fiction and falsehood, has no other but the dull Billingsgate way of covering it, by endeavoring to divert the reader's observation and censure from himself, by a confident repeated imputation of that to his adversary, which he himself is so frequent in the commission of, and of this the instances I have given, are a sufficient proof, in which I have been at the pains to set down the words on both sides, and the pages where they are to be found, for the reader's full satisfaction. The cause in debate between us is of great weight, and concerns every Christian that any evidence in the proposal, or defense of it, can be sufficient to conquer all men's prejudices, is vanity to imagine. But this, I think, I may justly demand of every reader, that since there are great and visible falsehoods on one side or the other, for the accusations of this kind are positive and frequent, he would examine on which side they are, and upon that I will venture the cause in my reader's judgment, who will but be at the pains of turning to the pages marked out to him, and as for him that will not do that, I care not much what he says. The greed makers following words, have the natural mark of their author, they are these, how can this animadverter come off with peremptorily declaring, that subjective faith is not inquired into, in the treatise of the reasonableness of Christianity, and 100. When in another place, and 36, he avers, that Christian faith and Christianity, considered subjectively, are the same. Ants, in which words there are two manifest untruths, the one is, that Mr. Bold peremptorily declares, that subjective faith is not inquired into, 1. e. spoken of, in the reasonableness of Christianity, and 100. Whereas Mr. Bold says in that place, if he, 1. e. the author, had not said one word concerning faith subjectively considered. The greed maker's other untruth is his saying, that the animadverter avers, 36, that Christian faith and Christianity, considered subjectively, are the same. Whereas it is evident, that Mr. Bold, arguing against these words of the creed maker, the belief of Jesus being the Messiah, was one of the first and leading acts of Christian faith, speaks in that place of an act of faith, as these words of his demonstrate, now, I apprehend that Christian faith and Christianity, considered subjectively, and an act of Christian faith, I think, cannot be understood in any other sense, are the very same. I must therefore desire him to set down the words wherein the animadverter peremptorily declares, 